Notice these words beginning in verse 31, Matthew 6, verse 31. Do not be anxious then, say, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with what shall we clothe ourselves? You ever take those words to heart? I mean, those are pretty direct words, aren't they? Don't be anxious about what you eat, about what you wear. And notice now the reason why our Lord makes that plain statement. Verse 32, For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. That's talking about us. By our nature, we eagerly seek what we shall eat, what we shall drink, with what we shall clothe ourselves, on what we will sit, upon what we will lie, what we will have around us in our surroundings. Our natures are such that we seek, without even trying, creature comfort. Why should I waste my time, my energy, my opportunity in seeking things my Father already knows I have need of? Let the pagans do that. They don't know they have a Father who cares for them even more than he cares for a bird in the bush. Let the Gentiles devote their energy and strength and opportunity, as I said, to seeking all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things, but, get these important words, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has trouble enough for its own. H have you ever caught the message here? Don't be like the Gentiles. Don't be like the unbelieving pagans. Don't devote your life to the pursuit of these things that your father is already aware that you need. Rather, set your heart to seek first his king, his righteousness. H have you ever caught the message here to seek first his king, his righteousness? One of the really sad things about this moment right now is that there are hundreds of you who do not want your life to make a difference. All you want is to be liked. Maybe finish school, get a good job, find a husband or a wife, a nice house, a nice car, weekends, good vacations, grow old healthy, have a fun retirement, die easy, no hell. And that's all you want. You don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. You don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. You don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. You don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. That's a tragedy that's in the making. Tragedy, that's a tragedy, that's a tragedy. That is a tragedy in the making. This is a tragedy. Title of the article, Start Now, Retire Early, February 1998. Bob and Penny took early retirement from their jobs in the Northeast five years ago when he was 59 and she was 51. Now they live in Punta Gorda, Florida, where they cruise on their... 30-foot trawler, play softball, and collect shells. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. And there are people in this country that are spending billions of dollars to get you to buy it. And I get 40 minutes to plead with you, don't buy it. With all my heart, I plead with you, don't buy that dream. 
The American dream. A nice house, a nice car, a nice job, a nice family, a nice retirement. Collecting shells as the last chapter before you stand before the creator of the universe to give an account with what you did. Here it is, Lord, my shell collection. Look, Lord, my shell collection. And I've got a good swing. And look at my boat. God, look at my boat, God. Have you ever caught the message here to seek for His kingdom, His righteousness? His kingdom, His righteousness.